my involvement in the uh, queer youth program affects my um, community or my surroundings, my friends, in the sense that they very um, there is a lot of um, lack of knowledge about transgender and gay teens and how they can be helped better. Um, it is it is a hard thing to educate everybody. I um, being uh, out as a transgender woman since two thousand and four. And uh, at first, it seems like everybody's accepting and uh, they're knowledgeable about it. But the more deep you go into uh, what they know about it, you find out that um, it is a, it's a hard thing to deal for people uh, because they have questions they're embarrassed to answer. And um, sometimes I tell them, you know, don't be embarrassed. Ask me the questions you want. Ask me the, the questions that you feel you, you don't, shouldn't ask about it. Because the more you know, the more deep you go into uh, these issues, the better informed you are and the better you get to know the person. Um, um, I have uh, friends who have uh, an easy time and I have friends who have a, a hard time um, dealing with transgender. For example, you... Um, um, I have conversations with other people and um, sometimes uh, you see that they make comments that are, you think, oh my God, that's a horrible comment, but for the person is not aware of uh, what they're uh, talking about or what they're, um, the, why would that question would be bad. Uh, recently I had a conversation with um, a friend of mine, uh, she's a female, and um, she was talking about that um, uh, trans uh, trans uh, people shouldn't feel uh, discriminated and they shouldn't make it a big deal because what they should do or what we should do as transgender uh, people is to um, teach ourselves how to accept the harassment, how to accept um, comments and grow strong. And it was tough to uh, have a conversation with that person because it is hard to uh, make somebody understand how much it hurts and how much strong you can be and still have um, people hurt you by the comments and you can be too strong but still when you hear somebody making a, a comment it is a horrible thing and I'm uh, afraid for or I'm nervous about teens because we as or I as a grown up still suffer from that and get cry sometimes when people make comments and I'm thinking when a teen gets a comment like that especially if they're transgender or they're gay and they have to be in the open and have people adults make comments to the teen that can be a horrible um horrible um how do you say a horrible um thing that stays in the heart you always remember those comments that people make that hurt and um, I think one of the things that I'm trying to do with uh, my peers is to teach them that they should be more accepting and that we should be more open. And when we see somebody that might be different, might look different, that they, um, we have all the same hearts, the same minds, and uh, we, all of us have the same except for uh, that you know, we choose to um, um, express ourselves in a different way. Um, I work for a non-profit um, organization and um, since 2004, um, uh, the person who's a doctor who um, works in the same place that I work uh, has uh, been struggling to educate the company how to be uh, gay friendly, how to be trans friendly, how to um, understand that making uh, the, uh, the calling the person the wrong pronoun can be hurtful. And companies uh, fortunately are run by people who have prejudices like all of us do um, it's just that in a, in a company uh, I believe that um, people that run the company should be more leaving their prejudices outside because they can help um, um, all kinds of people that come to the to the organization and uh, I'm so glad that the organization I work for is changing and is accepting and even though I see the struggle they have, um, it, it is becoming more friendly and um, now teens do come in and they, um, uh, uh, they feel welcome in a way, not as I would hope that um, uh, trans or gay uh, teens will come to my clinic and be uh, happy and get what they need and not need to explain over and over and over what they needs are. Uh, this is an interesting story because 
I had um, an idea that I was different and um, I would hear people make comments um, and I, um, for example, you're a girl and I'm not me not understanding that uh, people would see me as a girl because I believed I was a girl. Um, and hearing that comment making me just puzzled, what would they say I'm a girl when I am a girl? Even though, you know, I had um, a male body uh, um, and, um, and for me it was, uh, now that I look back, it's interesting how um, people perceive you uh, for who you are, sometimes more than what your physical appearance is. Um, I was about four when I noticed that I was different. Even though um, it took me years to become me, um, uh, I uh, started transitioning at age 30. I'm 43 now, um, and uh, I'm just so sad that it took me that long. I wish I could have done it better, and I just want to make sure that other people that are coming after me, uh, they can have a better chance to be happy at a sooner time and not go through the hurdles of this is uh, medically not indicated for your age, and uh, you don't know what you're doing. This can be a psychological issue. When I think us as uh, uh, transgender, we know a very early age who you are and, um, and you just need people to be there for you instead of asking questions and trying you to trying you to um, trying to change you for something you're not I don't have a favorite movie even though I um, think of the movie uh, innocent voices both voices innocentes which is a Spanish film about the war in El Salvador and I see that um, that um, it kind of relate what happens in the movie to kids, to what is happening in the world to trans and gay kids, that they get harmed by the uh, whatever the adults do, and the kids have nothing to do with it. Um, in this movie, there is um, uh, the family in the house, and a bomb gets dropped near to the house, and the kids are so scared of their lives and um, the, their, their parents are not there to protect them uh, for that bomb. So in a way I relate that to um, anybody that's different, trans or gay, that sometimes uh, we are alone, even though we have our parents and our parents get bombarded by religion and all this, that this is wrong and it's a psychological issue. And I relate it in that way but um, I'm not sure if that could be a uh, reason that would be my favorite movie or if that makes any sense. My favorite color, I would say, I don't have a favorite color, but I, if I had to pick one, I would pick purple. Um, I grew up in a village which is very religious and very Catholic, and they have, um, uh, they have a, um, these... Um, church where when the uh, day of the Easter, when Jesus uh, passes away, they cover his body in, uh, in purple. And um, then uh, on three days after, they remove the purple and they uh, change it to white. And uh, purple, I see it in the sense that it gives you, um, it gives you uh, the uh, protection you need while you're struggling through the process of, uh, in my case, of being transgender. And I'm just waiting for the white to come over and to be uh, uh, walking on the street without any comments, without any harassment, and just be me no matter how I looked. And um, so I would say in that sense, purple. But um, I'm waiting for the whites in my life. <laughs>